Welcome to the approach to breast radiology. Here are our objectives. Initially, breast imaging can be confusing to early residents because on the surface, it seems very different than the rest of radiology. However, when you break it down into its components, it's actually very similar. For example, this chest CT, you would first recognize the finding, then locate it in the right upper lobe, describe the finding, tree and bud nodularity with surrounding ground glass and at least one cavitary nodule, then diagnose the pathology, active tuberculosis infection. Breast imaging is very similar. For a mammogram, we first start with breast density. This one, density is almost entirely fatty. Then we recognize the lesion, locate it with these descriptors. So this one would be in the lower left breast at six o'clock, 10 centimeters from the nipple in the middle depth, then describe the lesion with the BIRADS lexicon. There is an equal density, irregular mass with speculated margins and give it a BIRADS number and recommendation. The BIRADS number would be five and recommend biopsy. We'll go through each of these steps one by one and spend most of the time on location because that is the most confusing concept. Much of this information comes from the BIRADS manual ex itself, which is referenced at the end. To start, for any mammogram, you have to designate a breast density from fatty to scattered, heterogeneously dense, and extremely dense, shown in this order. Now to locating a lesion. The goal here is to locate a lesion using these descriptors, which are useful for clinicians and surgeons and are also required for BIRADS and ACR certification. However, we cannot image in this plane because we are limited to two-dimensional projections. Therefore, we have to use at least two projections to help triangulate lesions as best we can. First, let's talk about identifying quadrants in the breast. I've drawn out the right breast and how we perform mammograms uh, in schematic form. First, the craniocaudal projection. You compress the breast in the superior and inferior approach and then perform a mammogram, and it is always displayed in this way, with the outer breast in the upper side of the image and the inner breast on the lower side of the image. Then it's pretty easy to tell on a mammogram if something is in the outer or inner half of the breast, but half is only half the picture. Then we use the MLO view. We don't do a straight lateral view because we need to encompass more of the upper outer quadrant and the axillary tail because that's where most of the breast tissue is. So now everything above the posterior line is more or less in the upper quadrants and same with the lower quadrants. I say more or less because the obliquity of the medial lateral oblique makes this a little bit more confusing. A true lateral, everything above the posterior nipple line is truly in the upper quadrants, but if we did this for screening, we would miss out on potential pathology in this upper outer quadrant and axillary tail. I've illustrated this concept further by putting the clock face numbers onto the schematic. So craniocaudal is relatively straightforward. All of the inner numbers are on the lower side of the image and all of the outer numbers are on the outer side of the image. The medial lateral oblique is where things get a little bit more complicated. I've colored the upper numbers in yellow, the lower numbers in blue, and nine and three as green, as seeing as they're in between. On the medial lateral oblique mammogram projection, we see that most of the upper clock numbers are in the upper side of the breast, but not all, and same with the lower side. Finally, on the lateral medial view, this makes more sense and is truly orthogonal to our first view, where all the upper numbers are in the upper portion of the breast and lower numbers are in the lower portion of the breast. Here's the same example, but for a left breast. Now we're gonna do some examples. I'm going to move rather quickly, so if you need time, just pause the video and you can think about your answers. We have a CC and an MLO view of both breasts. 
where is the diamond located in terms of clock face? Three, two, one, here we go. We see the diamond is in the center of the cranial caudal view, so we know it's either at 12 or 6 o'clock. Then we look at the medial lateral oblique view to see if it is upper or lower. This one is upper, so it must be at 12 o'clock. Here is the corresponding example at 6 o'clock. Here are a few more examples. I want to demonstrate how a lesion will appear differently from a MLO and an ML view. If the lesion is medial, it will appear to go up relative to the posterior nipple line. You can see how the numbers match up with this. There is a somewhat confusing mnemonic of muffins rise and lead sinks, meaning medial things will go up and lateral things will go down, but I find that a little bit confusing. I just remember mold, medial up and lateral down. Here is another example of the opposite thing happening with a lateral lesion going apparently down when moving from the MLO to the ML view. One quick word about different types of mammogram. Initially, we had film-based mammograms, then moved to digital 2D mammograms. Most recently, there is tomosynthesis. Here, the x-ray tube rotates 15 to 50 degrees, and those images are processed in a computer. The radiologist can then look through the stack of images of one breast. This will make more sense when you see one, but keep in mind the differences. Now that we know how to locate a lesion, we need to be able to describe it. The language in the rest of the radiology is much less confined, but in breast imaging, there are relatively strict definitions for each finding. And each of these descriptions connotes a different likelihood for malignancy. For example, if there is a mass, you need to decide and define the mass's shape, margin, and density. For calcifications, you need to describe the morphology and distribution. It's beyond the scope of this video to show you what each of these descriptions look like, but it is important to be familiar with them as you go through your rotation. These tables all came from the BIRADS reference card with a link at the bottom. There are many different resources for you to look at the different examples of each of these descriptions. Ultrasound and MRI also have their own BIRADS lexicon, which was important to know once you start looking at those modalities. At the end of every report, you need to give a numerical BIRAD score and a recommendation. The number ranges from 0 to 6. For a screening mammogram, the options are 0, 1, or 2. If there is a potentially suspicious lesion, then you give it a 0 and call the patient back for more imaging. For diagnostic mammography, your options are 1 through 6, and each of these numbers communicates a likelihood of malignancy shown here in green. The recommendation that is associated with these numbers is shown in the gold box below. There are many different benign and malignant pathologies that can fit into the boxes. However, regardless of diagnosis, each study must have a BIRADS number and recommendation. Thank you. I hope that was helpful. Email me with any questions.